One of the best parts of mathematics is proving powerful results that allow us to make quick work of problems that previously gave us a bit more trouble. Today, we'll see a prime example of that. In a previous lesson, we proved that the sequence negative one to the power of n diverges, and I'll leave a link in the description to that proof. Remember that a sequence diverging just means that it doesn't converge. So to prove that negative one to the n diverges, we used the definition of convergence. In particular, we used a contradiction argument. We supposed that negative one to the power of n, which we're just calling a n for the purposes of this lesson, we assumed that it converges to some limit l and then demonstrated a contradiction. Thus, it can't possibly converge to any real number. An important thing to note about that is we didn't prove that this sequence diverges to positive infinity, nor did we prove it diverges to negative infinity. We just proved that it diverges. That's because this sequence looks like this. It doesn't diverge to positive or negative infinity. It oscillates between one and negative one. So to prove a sequence like this diverges, you can't use those diverging to infinity definitions. But now that we've spent some time studying subsequences, we've got another much more slick way to prove that a sequence like this diverges. We've proven that a sequence converges to a real number if and only if every subsequence also converges to that same real number. I'll leave a link in the description to the lesson where we prove this. It's a really powerful result. This result gives us a very easy way to prove that this sequence diverges. Do you see how we can do it? Well, remember, this is a biconditional statement. So one part of this statement is that if a sequence converges to a real number, then every subsequence converges to that same real number. But remember, a statement is equivalent to its contrapositive. So when we proved this, we also proved this, but that means we also proved the contrapositive of this, which is this. If not every subsequence, converges to a real number, then the original sequence can't converge to that real number either. What does it mean for not every subsequence to converge to a real number L? Well, that means there's at least one subsequence that doesn't converge to L. So this clearly gives us a way to show that a sequence doesn't converge to a particular real number, but is there a way to generalize it to a more useful tool that will prove the sequence diverges completely in one fell swoop? Indeed there is, stated right here. This is the more useful result hiding underneath all the details. And we'll probably go through all this in more detail in a different lesson. For now, I just wanna focus on how we have a quick method to prove this sequence diverges. We don't have to focus on a single real number at a time. We can say that if a sequence has a pair of subsequences with different limits, then that sequence diverges, and that is slick. This is because if two subsequences have different limits, then we know that not every subsequence can converge to any given real number. Because if every subsequence converged to a particular real number, we certainly wouldn't be able to find a pair of subsequences with different limits, since they all converge to the same thing. So if we can find a pair of subsequences with different limits, then we've got a divergent sequence. With that in mind, how can we prove that this sequence diverges using subsequences? All we have to do is find two subsequences with different limits. And for this sequence, there are two obvious ones. First, consider the subsequence a2n. To find the first term of this subsequence, we plug in one for n, so the first term is a2, the second term of this sequence, which is negative one to the power of two, which is positive one. To find the second term of this subsequence, we plug in two for n, so the second term will be a4, which is negative one to the power of four, and negative one to an even power is always gonna spit out positive one. 
and that's all this sequence will consist of, negative one to even powers. So it'll just be positive one after positive one forever. It's a constant sequence of positive ones, and a constant sequence converges to its constant value. So this subsequence converges to one. However, what if we consider the subsequence of odd terms, a 2n minus one? Plug in one for n to find the first term of this subsequence. That's going to be a one, which is negative one to the power of one, which is negative one. The second term of the subsequence will be a three, which is negative one to the power of three, which is negative one. And we'll just keep having odd powers of negative one, which are always negative one. So this is a constant sequence of negative ones. Thus, it converges to negative one. So since our sequence has a pair of subsequences with different limits, we know the sequence diverges. It's as easy as that, much easier than the contradiction proof that we originally used to prove this diverges. And make sure you understand why this is sufficient to prove divergence. If negative one to the n did converge, then all of its subsequences would converge to the same limit. Since we found two subsequences that converge to different limits, we know that's not possible, and so the sequence diverges. Before we go, it's worth noting that this is a useful strategy only for oscillating sequences. You can try proving yourself that for a sequence that diverges to positive infinity or negative infinity, all of its subsequences will do the same. So you won't be able to find subsequences that converge to different limits in those cases. But this is a really useful way to prove that an oscillating sequence diverges. Just find two subsequences with different limits. To fear, could it take another year?